Welcome to another Captain Marwitz video. Today we're playing some World of Warships, and I originally had recorded this as a live commentary, but the audio was somewhat messed up because of mic settings and stuff and where I moved my mic to. Um, so we're just gonna, I guess, react to what I do in this. Since I'm not doing it in real time, I can actually focus a little bit more on what I'm doing and if I think what I'm doing is a good thing or not. Right now I'm, uh, I think, pointing out that there's two radars on the other team. <clears throat> There's a choppy and a and a Baltimore. Um, we're pushing up towards the A cap to obviously cap it. And I was debating whether I should go down on the four line or if I should uh, go to the two line. And as you can see, I obviously chose the two line. So uh, I think destroyers are probably my best <laughs> best ship that I can play. Normally, when I'm playing uh, battleships or cruisers, I always find myself getting in a situation that I shouldn't be in. So, that's kind of unfortunate, but with the destroyer, you're not detected, so you can be a lot more aggressive. And that's usually where I tend to like to play if I can. I like I like playing my Iowa sometimes, but it's rare that I get in and can actually get some citadels, because really with an American battleship, to get really good citadels and to get consistent citadels, you gotta be like, you know, 10, 13 kilometers. At least that's the way it seems with to me. Uh, just because of the way their shell arcs and shell velocity is. So, my choppy's about to pop his radar, and there he does. But that's not what's spotted. If I, if I had been paying attention to the minimap, I would have seen that that daring had showed up. Um, but I wasn't, and I just now noticed him. Like, oh, hey, there's a daring. And I wasn't going to do anything about him, but then I thought, well, you know, he might smoke up right there. Might He'll probably stay there since he has an island. So I fired a set of torps at him, and then we had this choppy, and I didn't, I couldn't understand why he wasn't doing his radar yet. He should have done his radar as soon as he got detected, because I think he has 12 kilometer radar, and that would have been more than enough to get me, and he could have got at least a couple salvos on me. So I decided to do some good while I'm capping, and I can use this little jet of the island right there to conceal my fire. And that's what I do. So we open up on the chappy. I have a hard time with the American Destroyer shell ballistics sometimes though, the shell arcs are just so high, and right there we got lucky on the daring. I'm glad I fired that set of torques. Really made my life easier. And we hit him with two of them too, so it wasn't even close for him. I'd be mad if I was him, because they were just a randomly fired set. Pre-fired, really, before he even smoked up. So he couldn't have anticipated that. And then right there, we get a hit on the choppy. And I don't know if he had a fire or if he forgot to repair, but you can see there, he's not repairing his flooding. Uh, in this game, we really, we just dealt the fire damage, honestly. Burnt these guys down right here. This is kind of a best case scenario for a Fletcher that has a gun build. Um, I don't remember what my captain skills and stuff are, but it's it's gun oriented. I know I have faster reload and stuff. And you can see right there the choppy uh, flooded out. He probably got hit by the Montana or the Freddy by a couple of shells because I can't imagine that one torpedo would do that to him. But we're just lighting this, this Yamato up. Got this nice little slit in the island. Slit. Little divot, I guess. And since I have two fires on him, which he had repaired, and then I immediately lit two more on him. I'm gonna switch to the Freddy here in a second. Try to get some fires on him. Unfortunately, Freddy's kind of at the bit. There's there's your max range, or at least with the, the American ships, there's your max range and then there's your effective range. And 10 kilometers is not your effective range. I wouldn't say. It's at the very edge of it. You want them at like 8. You know, 8's good. You get a lot of consistent hits. I mean, you can get consistent hits either way, but um, not always. Because they're in the air for so long. And I have a, when I'm firing like this, I get excited and I don't really take time to aim. I just kind of send shells where I think they're going to hit. My accuracy could definitely be better. But that poor Yami, we, we've lit him on fire five times now. And 
then we got the Freddy with one fire right there. I don't know if they bu buffed the fire potential for Fletcher or if it has something to do with... They had to have done something because normally it's a lot harder than this to start fires uh, in Fletcher or any American ship, really. At least that's what I found. That or I just got incredibly lucky this game. So they've lost three cruisers in a DD right now, and we're only down two cruisers in a DD. Um, the left side of the map is really where things are going down, or on the eight, nine, whatever, the seven, eight, nine, and ten lines is where most of the fighting's going down. Over here is just kind of a small skirmish. Uh, but I'm really confused as to why our Montana and Freddy aren't pushing harder. Because they have such a big advantage right now, like there's nothing to keep them from pressing this this advantage, and that's just that's just terrible, terrible accuracy right there. It was at this point uh, I was deciding that I was going to move out of the cap or move on. Yeah, I'm like, well, they're kind of at the extension of my range. I'm not really doing that much good anymore. So let's push out of here and do some good or and cut off the Freddy. I was thinking maybe I could uh, I'll beat the Freddy. I'm already in front of him and he can sail into my torpedoes. But I find it's really hard when uh, players know that they're going to be torped to, to actually hit him. At least most players. Fortunately, I can't keep firing at him. I didn't do as much damage to him as I would like, but that's all right. <laughs> Engine boost activated. And our gearing over there is playing super passive. And they don't have any radar left, so I don't know why. I mean, I know they have the other DDs, but come on now. Popped our speed boost, just trying to get a little bit more speed, get it... Get around. I kind of wish the American DD speed boosts were a little bit stronger. <laughs> it doesn't really increase your top speed by that much. Um, but we've effectively we've gotten to where we need to get, which is in front of this Freddy. Like, well, I can fire at him because there's the island. I wasn't really checking to my left. I wasn't really thinking about that. So I fired once, and then I saw I got detected, and there's the Iowa right there. So I turn in, um, no particular reason really, actually just trying to present a smaller cross section for Iowa to hit, um, make it a little bit easier to dodge. I'm not going to fire again, and obviously I'm not going to fire torpedoes there. I, my intent, my, when I switched to torpedoes, I was, if he has the incoming fire skill, I don't remember what it's called, I don't play this game all the time, but, um, I was hoping that he would, you know, think I fired torch and kind of sail out of there. Because really, I want to shoot the gap that's between those two islands right there, on the uh, between the six and uh, five line right there, like right through that little slit and kind of cut Freddy off and hit their cap. But I was thinking I was probably just gonna. I mean, if she wants to, she could pretty she could cut me off from doing that because we're already pretty close. But I, I like to, I'm a little bit ballsy sometimes, so I decided to go for it. And I also saw that the gearing was 11 km out right there, so he's not a threat. Um, I don't know where their Sashio is. Actually, I saw their Sashio was up top last time. I think I send a set of torps out towards them. Oh, no, I don't. I, th I, th I save them. I save them. I thought about it. I kind of wish I would have now. I, I would. I want to see if I would have hit that. That's just so hard to hit a ship that's sailing away from you. And, you know, your torpedoes have to match their speed. It's it's difficult. It's easy for them to dodge. But Freddy's sailing right at me, and I know he knows I'm here. So, I fire that set on his current bearing because I know he's gonna turn back in because he's trying to dodge my torpedoes right now. And I go ahead and fire one a little bit in because I, I know, once again, I know he's going to turn in. I should have waited on that shot right there. I should have waited for him to turn in like he does right there. And then kind of snaked around to the right and fired another set. But this guy, he's really, 
um, perceptive on when my torpedoes are reloaded. I, sh I, I, I thought about staying in the sea cap, but I decided that, I mean, I would, I would just try to get better torpedo shots off on the Freddy. Right there, I think he just barely missed, missed the torp, or the torpedo just barely missed him. But you know what happens. So right here, I probably should have just smoked up right here and said, screw it. How far is he? He's 6.8. I should have moved back like to 7.5 or 8 and just opened up with my guns. But I didn't. That Montana is raking him over pretty good too. Right now I'm just waiting for my torpedoes to reload. I'm also keeping them spotted. Uh, that's a good thing, I reckon. Waiting for the torpedoes to get reloaded. And it was at this point, like, I was starting to think, like, is it even worth it to fire that set of torpedoes? Because he's at 23k, and Montana can easily finish him off. But it's pretty hard to deny yourself a kill, you know? And then with the, as, as soon as I fired, he's already down to 7, and I'm like, oh, well, what a waste of time. And this is what I think is crazy. I fire that set of torpedoes, and instantly he starts turning in. So either he was maneuvering to avoid Montana... I don't know why I fired that second set. Direct front. Oh, there's there's gearing. <laughs> she definitely it, it definitely surprised me. It caught me off guard, but I'm glad she she was low on health. It's an easy easy kill right there. She did quite a bit of damage to me though though no no lie. And obviously I'm trying to go undetected, and he misses he he outmaneuvers the second set. And he's healing right now, so I'm like, well, screw him. We're just going to smoke up, and we're just going to light this boy up. And I think before this salvo hits, <laughs> uh, Montana just deletes them, which is really unfortunate because I just wasted my smoke. And we're getting into the, the closing quarters of the game. We have two DDs and our two BBs left, and they have only one DD and three battleships left. So I would consider that an advantage. Now, our gearing player is, I don't know why he's playing so far back. I guess maybe because he's worried about the other destroyer, but I don't know what health he's on right now, but I don't think he's that low, so. Firing a few shots at Iowa. This is good proof right here. He was sitting still when I fired these, and um, by, the time, by the time they come back down, he, he's already managed to reverse. He's in a battleship, so... Just gonna try to close the distance a little bit here and get some torps off again. I was hoping that thunder would come right through the gap, but then I noticed. So the, here's the issue with firing at Iowa. That island, um, where's that island at? It's on the eight line, and it's right in front of everything. And I know that's where I was gonna sail through, so I can't torp them yet, like right through there. Uh, I'm not going to have enough time for that. Or at least I don't think I am. A bunch of gearing torpedoes coming in. It's firing at, at long range. Like, I don't know why. So now I'm like, well, I can take Thunderer out. I would did get hit by one torp. Um, I wasn't sure what Thunderer was going to do, so I fired a second set. Uh, a little bit inside just in case Thunderer turned towards me. Uh, it looks like Gearing actually did hit him with one one of those torps, but if he just moved closer and, <laughs> I mean, it'd be so much easier to hit his target. Especially considering that the Sashio just got deleted by the Montana. So that's a really good salvo of torps right there. That Thunder's definitely dead at that point. And we cracked 100,000 damage. I mean, for me, that's a good game. You know. Considering, I mean, I wouldn't even really consider myself an average World of Warships player, just somebody that plays from time to time to have a little bit of fun, you know? And at this point, the game's over. You know, it really is. We have the points advantage, our Freddies and their uh, C cap. I'm going to get their D cap if Iowa leaves it. And they only have two ships left, and we have two DDs. Uh, and they have nothing to counter us, really. So it'll be, it'll be an easy win. At this point, at least that's what I that's what I was anticipating. You never know what's going to happen in World of Warships. Crazy things can happen. 
And so right now at this point, all I'm thinking about is getting more damage. Uh, you know. Because that's what you do. I, I wanted a Kraken, really. I wanted another kill. And Iowa looks good for it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to close the distance. I, I even, when I was playing, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking I was going to be able to close the distance in that amount of time. And I realized that he put the island between me and him, and there's nobody that can detect me, so I might as well light him up. And there I go, set fire on him too. So I really do, I really do think that they buffed the fire starting capability of the American destroyers, or or did something with the skill. I know that they changed IFHE and Demolition Expert, I think, recently. Uh, so maybe it's something that has to do with how I have those skills. When I say recently, I mean a few months ago. It's just been a while since I played. I kind of switched games around quite a bit. Play whatever I'm kind of feeling like, you know. You gotta, you, you gotta do what you can to keep uh, keep entertained during the, these times, you know. Yeah, we just lay down quite a bit of fire here. They're actually doing pretty good damage too. Um, really racking it up. A lot of penetrations on Iowa as opposed to the Freddy, who I wasn't penetrating really at all. <laughs> Sounds so dirty when you talk about it like that, you know. <laughs> Let's penetrate that Iowa boy, you know. <laughs> um. Let's see. Come on. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump to the results because this is pretty much just me trying to chase down the Iowa. I got a few more shots in on him, but not really anything substantial. So uh, over the results, we did, uh, there. did uh, 132,000 damage, 231 hits, 5 torpedo hits, and 4 ships destroyed. We started 8 fires in a Fletcher, which... And my experience in the past has doesn't have the best uh, fire starting capabilities. And we had two floods and we captured two points. So it was a pretty good game. Um, not too bad on the credit side. I do have premium. I bought like three months worth of premium. And it's like every time I do that for a game like this, I don't really play it that much. Like you play it a ton. And then you're like, dude, I'm playing this game so much. I should buy premium for it. And then you buy premium and you don't play it that much. You know, it's the way life goes. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe. Uh, I'm Captain Marwitz, and I'll catch you in the next one.